Well, I started my life looking uh, in my science career, looking at water, and uh, it's been 40 years or 45 years of trying to understand water. I used to try to do it by looking at the science, that is, the hydrology, how much water there is, when it falls, when it's available, uh, who uses what. <coughs> but then I found that what we, uh, what the problem is that people do not understand the amount of water that's used to produce things. The book is to try to explain to people in sim simple language these messages that about how much water is necessary for farming, for agriculture and food production. 90% <coughs> of the water that we need each day or each lifetime is uh, for food. Most people don't know that. Mm -hmm. they, they are aware of the water that they need to drink, but three litres a day is nothing, nothing. Yeah. Um, you can actually go and buy it without any trouble from the supermarket. Mm. The water we're keeping clean is about 150 litres, and rather more, obviously much less in poor countries, but uh, 150 is enough. In the United States they use twice as much, or more than twice as much, but, <coughs> but they, can, they are bringing it down quite uh, interestingly. But those numbers are nothing compared with the, well that's 150 litres, 160 litres a day, which is a sixth of a cubic metre. But if you are a, <coughs> a beef eater, you need five cubic metres a day. Or if you're a vegetarian, it's just two and a half. The thing that I've learned over my decades in the game is that once you allocate what we call blue water, that's the water in the river or in the ground, mm -hmm. to irrigation, you always, always, always run out of water. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the United Kingdom where we've only got a tiny little area of irrigated farming, that's the place in the country where we run out of water because there's nothing that uses <coughs> water as does agriculture. The big four are wheat, <coughs> corn, soya and sugar. And, um, those are all crops, and beef of course is, is the other big one. Those are all food commodities which Brazil is a very big player. In fact, the two economies in the world that are pivotal are the United States and, and Brazil. Because we haven't yet, we haven't, the globe of the world hasn't yet tested Brazil's water capacity. People don't realize that it's the farmers <coughs> who deal with the big water. Um, they then don't realize that there are two sorts of water. There's the water which can be blue water, which you can pump <coughs> and some value and actually see and touch. Uh, and that produces about 30% of our food. But the green water in the soil profile, in the root zone, which is there because it rains in certain parts of the world, especially in Brazil, so the United States and Brazil have a lot of rain-fed farming. And the trade, and this is one of my other messages, the trade in food that keeps everyone food secure and water secure is mainly green water. That's the water which people don't even know is there. What I, my, one of my passions is to have farmers at meetings, well-informed farmers, who <coughs> have an understanding of the value of green water and blue water, uh, and also to give the farmers recognition that they have, in fact, achieved miracles over the past 50 years. In Europe, we've moved the productivity of water up three times in rain-fed farming. It was already three tons a, a, a hectare. We now get 10 tons a hectare of wheat. The uh, United States has rather more difficult rain-fed conditions, but it's gone up from sort of two to five or six. And Brazil likewise, uh, one of the other thing that I try to expose in my book is that Brazil has some of the best uh, agriculture in the world, much of the best water science, agricultural science in the world. Uh, and the, the increase in production and productivity of your farms is extraordinary and again the world doesn't recognize it and the farmers don't get credit for it.
Thank you.